This film explores how the positive use of science can effectively control and reduce the impact of hazardous chemicals and waste in our environment. Over the past 50 years, we have all been unwitting participants in a vast, uncontrolled, global chemistry experiment involving the oceans, air, soils, plants, animals and humans. Chemicals play an important role in the world economy and are used widely in industry, manufacturing processes, agriculture and in a vast range of consumer products. But once released, some of these chemicals and their waste products are known to cause toxic reactions, persist in the environment for years, travel thousands of kilometres from where they were originally used and threaten long-term human health and ecological consequences that were never anticipated or intended. The synergies between Basel, Rotterdam and Stockholm conventions address the sound management of chemicals and waste through a life cycle approach. They align scientific processes through their respective subsidiary bodies, which evaluate and process scientific information to support the conference of the parties in decision-making that ultimately aims to reduce the adverse effect on humans and the environment. Experts involved in the scientific assessment of chemicals and waste under the three conventions explain some of the criteria used in the processes. There are four criteria that have to be fulfilled. The first one is the persistence of the chemical in the environment. The next uh, criteria is beside persistence is by accumulation. When a chemical is released into the environment, it uh, actually uh, travels all over the globe. Uh, the third is the long-range transport and the final and important part is the toxicity to man and the environment and the ecotoxicity to environmental media. These parameters all have to be assessed in the screening phase and you can see already that you need experts in many different fields. Typically we are observers within the uh, conference of the parties we work very closely with the uh, Persistent Organic Pollutant Review Committee and we supply and also during the intercession, intercessional working groups from the Pop Rock as it's called, um, we provide data, data that were generated as previously mentioned uh, during the registration of our different products. We also provide these different committees with published or unpublished data. The task of the Chemical Review Committee is to review those notifications and proposals against the criteria set out in Annex 2 and Annex 4 to the Convention, respectively. And, to my experience, the main challenge is to apply those criteria with certain flexibility. In any global effort for the sound management of chemicals and waste, there are inevitable issues and challenges. The interested stakeholders, including governments, NGOs and industry, are invited to provide information gathered from a variety of sources from across the planet. We asked a number of leading experts how these challenges are addressed. I can think of one chemical, which is DDT, which is used in uh, malaria uh, to decrease the mosquitoes. Here, it was a complex situation. The decisions had to be made on a scientific basis, the data that was there. What was the damage to the environment that came about due to the use of the DDT? And on the other hand, what were the benefits of malaria uh, eradication, which was part of human health? And so all this needed scientific evidence. I mean, on one hand, persistent DDT, uh, what did it have in the environment? Was it in the... Uh, in shells, in the water supplies and so on. On the other hand, of course we had a decrease of malaria and how many lives were saved because of the decrease of malaria. The challenges are that there are certainly different views of the science and the evidence is deliberated very carefully. On the one hand, industry brings evidence that from my perspective is not peer-reviewed and we try to bring only peer-reviewed evidence to the committee the committee should not be political. It should consider the evidence as it is. Uh, for us, the key issue is that the process is followed as it's prescribed by the uh, spirit and the text of the convention. And in that sense, we keep on making the interventions to it, try to ensure that as far as possible, this scientific approach is being maintained. To ban 
to eliminate dangerous chemicals of our uh, life is getting more and more complex in terms of many of these new chemicals that we are now considering as uh, persistent organic pollutants are daily life products. They are in our mobile phones, they are in our textile, they are everywhere in building materials. So it's more and more complex now to get aware of that. We have still challenges to science and then challenges to policy based on sound science. So if you think about it, um, chemical research and development is largely funded by the private sector uh, for creating a chemical fit for a particular purpose. But we also need as much research put into the evaluation of the environmental costs of the chemicals and waste, and that's often not comparable. There are major financial issues when it comes to sound management of chemicals. Unfortunately, the way that we actually see the whole industry developing is one where the risk is always placed, in the end, on the environment and on humans, on the recipients, rather than those who are actually producing. And in fact, if we look at the science itself, we see that nearly 90% of investment goes into the production ideas of chemicals, and a very, very small amount of money is spent on the research of the risks. Because of the human casualties, the ministers of uh, environment and uh, health have now come to realize that uh, science is very important. But the problem again is poor funding of research. They say it, but they are yet to put their money where their mouth is. That's the challenge. The challenge that we are facing when we are developing such guidance on one chemical is we will find that chemical, sometimes some of the chemicals related to that chemical in many different types of race streams, coming, arising also from different types of activities across the life cycle of that chemical. So that's been a particular challenge for all the members of the group is to try to consolidate some guidance on such a array of waste streams. Now that the challenges have been understood, how does science contribute positively in the decision-making process for removing toxic chemicals and waste at a national level? We use the science basically to educate our policymakers on uh, the impacts of chemicals on human health and the environment, as well as the cost of inaction. For example, how much money the uh, government is losing out in terms of not implementing those provisions of a particular convention at national level and coming up with uh, national laws that domesticate those uh, particular conventions at national level. We now know that there is many alternatives for many dangerous chemicals that could be added in products as additives. We need to work uh, more together with the industry to co-produce knowledge in terms of improve our uh, the, the use of chemicals in our uh, lives. In Jordan, we have a panel established by law uh, where they are, uh, we are engaging all stakeholders, including private sector, industry, government, NGOs, academia. We have big changes from the beginning and from engaging uh, or putting on, on a place uh, the new legislation based on the Basel uh, Convention and the uh, stakeholders are happy because they believe that uh, uh, it is uh, past all the testing possible and we believe it is the best practices and uh, around the world and we are bringing the best practices in terms of legislation and implementation of the convention at the national level. When we in Jamaica look at a particular pesticide to see and find that it, is, it may require regulatory action and we have the body of scientific knowledge from the conventions, we then have a regional uh, body that meets once a year called the Coordinating Group of Pesticide Control Boards of the Caribbean. Where we really see the potential for not only innovation but for in fact large profits is when companies can actually produce chemicals that have far lower hazard and far lower harmful effects and in effect generate the same kind of productivity and functionality. That is where the future of the chemicals industry must reside and perhaps that's something that we should actually try to introduce into the thinking that governments could actually promote and provide resources to think of that side of the coin rather than always the clean-up side. You can't expect a government to act without a sound scientific body of evidence and some attention to the cost-benefit analysis. 
So international government instruments and financial bodies can't operate effectively if sound science is not imparted on delimiting the scope of a problem and discerning the best solutions. It is important that we see how we can make science relevant, not only in the issue of chemicals production, but also in its application, but also in the institutions that we have, and also in policy making. Science that contributes to these decisions, because there is no other method that we have other than science to assess benefit versus risk and for final decisions to be made by institutions such as the Conference of Parties. Thank you.